We live in an astonishingly complex universe. Human beings are curious by nature, and again and again, we have asked ourselves, why are we here? Where we come from, and where the world comes from? What is the world made of? We are privileged to live in a time when we have come close to some of the answers. String theory is our most recent attempt to answer the last of these questions. So what is the world made of? Hi I'm James Valcourt. And welcome to Science News. Ordinary matter is composed of atoms, which in turn are made up of only three basic components, electrons spinning around a nucleus composed of neutrons and protons. The electron is really a fundamental particle, it belongs to a family of particles called leptons, but neutrons and protons are made of smaller particles, called quarks. The quarks, as far as we know, are really elementary. The sum of our current knowledge about the subatomic composition of the universe is known as the standard model of particle physics. This describes both the fundamental bricks of which the world is constituted and the forces through which these bricks interact. There are 12 basic bricks. Six of them are quarks, and they have curious names, up, down, charm, strange, bottom and top. A proton, for example, consists of two quarks above and one below. The other six are leptons, these include the electron and his two heaviest brothers, the muon and the three neutrinos as well tauon. There are four fundamental forces in the universe, gravity, electromagnetism, and weak and strong interactions. Each of these is produced by fundamental particles that act as carriers of force. The most familiar example is the photon, a particle of light, which is the mediator of electromagnetic forces. This means that, for example, when a magnet attracts a nail, it is because both objects are exchanging photons. The graviton is the particle associated with gravity. The strong interaction is produced by eight particles known as gluons. I prefer to call pegamoids. The weak interaction finally is transmitted by three particles, bosons W+, W, and Z. The standard model describes the behavior of all these particles and forces with impeccable precision, but with a notable exception, gravity. For technical reasons, the force of gravity, the most familiar in our daily lives, has been very difficult to describe at the microscopic level. For many years this has been one of the most important problems in theoretical physics, formulating a quantum theory of gravity. In recent decades, string theory has appeared as one of the most promising candidates for being a microscopic theory of gravity. And it is infinitely more ambitious, it pretends to be a complete, unified, and consistent description of the fundamental structure of our universe. For this reason, he is occasionally given the arrogant title of theory of everything. The essential idea behind string theory is as follows, all the various fundamental particles of the standard model are really just different manifestations of a basic object, a string. How can this be? Well, normally we would imagine that an electron, for example, is a little point, without any internal structure. A point can do nothing but move. But, if the string theory is correct, using a very powerful microscope, we would realize that the electron is not really a point, but a small loop, a string. A rope can do something besides move, it can swing in different ways. If it oscillates in a certain way, then, from afar, unable to discern that it is really a string, we see an electron. But if it oscillates otherwise, then we see a photon, or a quark, or any other of the particles of the standard model. So that, if string theory is correct, the whole world is made of strings only. Perhaps the foremost stunning issue regarding string theory is that such a simple idea works, it is possible to obtain an extension of the standard model, which has been experimentally verified with extraordinary precision, from a string theory. But it is important to clarify that, so far, there is no experimental evidence that string theory itself is the correct description of the world around us. This is principally because of the very fact that string theory remains within the development stage. We know some of its parts, but not yet its complete structure, and therefore we cannot yet make concrete predictions. 
In recent years there have been many extraordinarily important and encouraging advances, which have radically improved our understanding of the theory. Now let's talk about the superstring theory. The superstring theory is a theoretical diagram to explain all the particles and fundamental forces of nature in one theory that models the particles and physical fields as vibrations thin supersymmetric strings move in a space-time of more than four dimensions. One of the motivations used by superstring theorists is that the scheme is one of the best candidate theories to formulate a quantum theory of gravity. The superstring theory may be a shorthand of the supersymmetric string theory as a result of, unlike the sonic string theory, this is the version of string theory that incorporates fermions and supersymmetry. The superstring theory comprises five theories or alternative formulations of string theories, combined in which supersymmetry requirements have been introduced. The fundamental idea is that the reality is strings that vibrate in resonance at a frequency of the Planck length and where the graviton would be a spin-spin 2 and null mass. Recently it has been possible to prove that several of these formulations are equivalent and after all of them there could be a unified theory or theory of everything. The five existing theories are no more than individual cases limit of this unified theory, provisionally known as M, theory. This M theory attempts to explain all existing subatomic particles at the same time and unify the four fundamental forces of nature. It defines the universe formed by a multitude of vibrant strings, since it is a version of string theory that incorporates fermions and supersymmetry. The main problem of current physics is to be able to incorporate the force of gravity as explained by the theory of general relativity to the rest of the already unified physical forces. The superstring theory would be a method of unifying these theories. The theory is far from being finished and profiled, since there are many undefined variables, so there are several versions of it. The underlying problem in theoretical physics is to harmonize the theory of general relativity, where gravitation and large-scale structures stars, galaxies, clusters are described, with quantum mechanics, where the other three fundamental forces that are described are described they act at the atomic level. The development of quantum field theory of an invariable force results in infinite and useful probabilities. Physicists have developed mathematical techniques of renormalization to eliminate those infinities of three of the four elementary forces, electromagnetism, sturdy nuclear and weak nuclear, however not of gravity. The development of the quantum theory of gravity must, therefore, come in a different way than those used for other forces. The basic idea is that the fundamental constituents of reality are strings of a Planck length, close to 10 to 35 meters, that vibrate at resonance frequencies. Every string, in theory, has a unique harmony, or resonance. Different harmonies determine different fundamental forces. The tension in the rope is of the order of Planck's forces, 1044n. The graviton, name proposed for the particle that carries the gravitational force, for example, is predicted by the theory that it is a string with zero amplitude. Another key idea of the theory is that measurable differences between strings that recapitulate small dimensions in themselves and many that move in large dimensions cannot be detected. The singularities are avoided because the observable consequences of the great collapse never reach zero size. In fact the universe can start a small, big collapse of processes. String theory says that the universe can never be smaller than the size of a string, at that point it could begin to expand. Although the evident physical universe has three abstraction dimensions and a temporal dimension, nothing prohibits a theory from describing a universe with quite four dimensions, particularly if there's a mechanism of apparent unobservability of the extra dimensions. That is the case of string theory and superstring theory that postulate compactified additional dimensions and that would only be observable in physical phenomena that involve very high energies. In the case of superstring theory, the consistency of the theory itself requires a space-time of 10, 11 or 26 dimensions. The conflict between observation and theory is resolved by compacting the dimensions that cannot be observed in the usual energy range. 
In fact, superstring theory is not the first physical theory that proposes extra spatial dimensions. At the beginning of the century, a geometric theory of the electromagnetic and gravitational field known as the Kaluza Klein theory was proposed that postulated a five dimensional space time. The human mind has difficulty visualizing larger dimensions because it is only possible to move in three spatial dimensions. One way to deal with this limitation is not trying to visualize larger dimensions at all but simply thinking, when making equations that describe a phenomenon, that more equations should be made than usual. This opens up the questions that these extra numbers can be investigated directly in any experiment, where results in one, two, plus one dimensions would be shown to human scientists. Thus, in turn, the question arises as to whether these types of models that are investigated in this abstract modeling and potentially impossible experimental devices can be considered scientific. The six-dimensional shapes of Calabi Yao they can have additional dimensions by superstring theory. One theory that generalizes it is the brain theory, where the strings are replaced by elementary constituents of the membrane type, hence their name. The existence of ten dimensions is mathematically necessary to avoid the presence of tachyons, particles faster than light, and ghosts, particles with a probability of null existence. Thanks for watching this video. For more videos please subscribe to Science News. For more details please visit widelyexplore.com.